2022 edition, these look um, very, very similar, right? <clears throat> One of them is clearly uh, rather well more loved. You can't maybe tell that on the camera here, but it's been through, well, it's been to Madagascar and back in other places uh, and through many moves. And this is, this 2022 edition is a brand new, brand new book. I read from la last week, How Injections Can Disable Children. And this is the section that I read from that I'm showing now. Um, one out of every three cases of polio is caused by injections, uh, they say in the 1992 section. They specifically say, um, to reduce the chance of paralysis from polio, it is best not to give vaccinations, immunizations, or any other injections when a child has a fever or signs of a cold. This could be a mild polio infection without paralysis. Okay, and show what that same section looks like in 2022, if you will, Zach. That's, That's the third picture. It's exactly the same section, and it's one of the very few sections of the book, which looks very different, although it's in exactly the same, you know, it's the same section. So they've taken out both the image of three three children, three children with polio, one of whom they are attributing to having gotten some kind of an injection. And they've taken out all mention of the fact of vaccinating when you are already sick, vaccinating a child when the child is already sick, potentially causing trouble. They have taken that out. They've removed it. Why? I don't know, but they've taken it out. Well, we have to leave one possibility open here. Mm -hmm. And I think with polio, I mean, I don't know. And I, I, uh, I would like to to look into it, but the nature. So, in the case of one in three cases of polio may actually be vaccine induced. What they're likely talking about is the case of an attenuated vaccine that has a bad interaction with a latent um, infection. They are so, and not necessarily. They're they're not specifying actually. Um, if I if I read both the lines and between the lines. Um, they are not restricting, uh, in the 1992 edition, their claim that uh, one in three or up to one in three polio infections may actually have been caused by an injection. They're not saying that one in three would have been caused by a polio vaccination. They're saying an injection, which is to say that it's possible that a low-level sickness that a child has could be polio. And that sometimes it is in these cases where polio is still endemic and that getting any kind of injection that has any kind of effect like an adjuvant that's wow. going to trigger the immune system um, will cause that polio infection, which the child would have been able to fend off and then be immune to it, to blow up into a lifelong debilitating disease. Yeah, well, if that is the case, if that's really the implication there, then it hints at a very important fact, which you and I have become increasingly focused on as we've thought more and more about the various different technologies involved in vaccines and so-called vaccines. Um, but the idea of, hey, some manufacturer needs to get more of a reaction out of the immune system because what it's giving you is very weak T antigenically. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to use an adjuvant to wake up your immune system. How good is it to wake up your immune system? What happens if your immune system is reacting to something else at the same time, which it often is and you may not be aware of? So anyway, so I mean, and when if you think about it this way, like okay, should I take should I take a shot or an oral vaccine, for instance, the purpose of which is to engage my immune system when I am sick with something else? Does would that ever make sense? Right? It it seems actually kind of clear that that is something that should be a common sense piece of advice. Wait until you feel in perfect health. Wait until I'm going to make some numbers up, you know, a week, two weeks after the last time you felt in any way sick before you get something on board, before you take something on board, the purpose of which is to inform your immune system and of, of a particular pathogen and aggravate it enough that it hops to right? If your immune system is already responding to a cold or a flu or, God forbid, you know, a low-level polio virus, it's already engaged and now it gets some other injection um, that the purpose of which is in part to get your immune system to kind of, you know, get flustered, get active. If their original numbers are right, that is extraordinary that you know what, this is, and it's, an, it's another reason we're going to get back to like um, Kurt Vandenbosch is like, you do not vaccinate during a, during a pandemic, right? You do not vaccinate against a thing when that thing is circulating, right? Uh, because it's, you, you potentially make it worse because well, there is going to be some ability for some number of people. And we don't, 
at all fully understand why people vary so much. But for any given disease, exposure to that disease is going to result in very different kinds of illness across the population. Yeah. It's also true that to the extent that there is something called a safety test that actually has the capacity to find um, risks, the number of people involved in a safety test who would have been sick with any one of the dozens of things that they might have contracted is going to be tiny. So to the extent yeah. that this vaccine and this illness are a bad combination, A, it's almost certain to be missed. B, um, that risk is always there. And therefore the idea of, well, should you take a vaccine? Vaccines are safe. Suppose a vaccine was perfectly safe, mm -hmm. which I don't believe they ever are, but a vaccine was perfectly safe, except in people who were sick with something that does circulate. Right. Right. So that some tiny number of people who happen to be sick with something, maybe it's, you know, the first day of their illness with something else, and they don't know that they're sick yet. Right. And they get a vaccine. The point is you're taking that risk inherently when you say, this is a vaccine worth taking. This should be factored into the calculus. What are the chances that some parameter like am I sick with something else is going to change the safety of this vaccine in my particular case on this particular day? If that exists for every vaccine, right, then the point is, oh, well, there's a reason you shouldn't want to have the number of vaccines be arbitrary large in the first place, mm -hmm. even if they were all safe right? Because the point is... And uh, that you shouldn't simply follow a schedule. Like, well, if he's three months old, he needs to get it, but he's got, he's got a cold. Nope. If he's three months old, he's got to get the thing. I'm going to wait until that child is healthy. Right. Or maybe, you know, as, and as you also and I... also as long as possible. As you and I have talked about, there are lots of things that potentially could have influences on the hazard of, of these sorts of technologies that are simply not discussed right? Mm -hmm. If myocarditis is a risk, does it matter which arm you're injected in? Probably. Mm -hmm. And therefore, why is that something, you know, that is left to the clinician or to the patient to decide, right? Why is that not an issue? If it is true that being sick with something changes the mm -hmm. risk that accompanies a particular inoculation, then is there a season in which inoculating is safer? And therefore, should there be inoculation season and no-go season, right? Yeah, maybe pollen season isn't the right season to be inoculating people. Perhaps it isn't. Maybe it's true that vaccines are an incredibly potent weapon against infectious disease, but that they are dangerous enough that what should happen is you should have a blood panel that decides whether or not you appear to be sick with something you don't know about that might affect how safe the thing is. Before getting any inoculation. Right. Mm -hmm. The point is there's a whole landscape of possibilities in between these things are too unsafe to uh, contemplate, and these things are so safe that you are a bad person if you don't get one. Yes, that, that binary being, of course, trotted out as anti-vaxxer and vaxxer. Right. And neither of those positions make sense. Anti-vaxxer and decent person, which is not a dichotomy. <laughs> right. Right.